I'm joined by Fintan O'Toole of the 42.e to talk about the Cork Hurling semi-finals at the weekend. Glen Rovers beat Aaron Zone 22 points to 3.10 and Black Rock saw off UCC after extra time 3.26 to 34. Was it a good weekend for Cork Hurling? I think so, yeah. Um, I mean, the traditional uh, final pairing that maybe a lot of people have talked about or probably wanted in the city for a long time has come to pass. It's probably just such a pity that the one year it does, you won't get the crowd that you would normally get drawn to it. So, I mean, for the historical elements, Glen Rovers, Black Rock, Tiff, Inverish, people outside of Cork probably heard of listening to this. They've, they've dominated for decades. You haven't had a final with two of the three involved since 88, and you haven't had a Glen Rovers, Black Rock final since 78 and they, look, they dominated um, for decades. Um, look, Glen Rovers have been kind of on top over the last couple of years, and they got to the final last year. They won two titles in 15-16. So from their point of view, I think it's very impressive in terms of their sign of consistency. They've been in four finals. Um, and I think they were always kind of favoured to win uh, to win their semi-final against their own zone. But um, the, the Black Rock UCC, uh, game was uh, like an outstanding match and that was probably the, the most eye-catching result given the nature of the game and uh, given the outcome over the weekend. Hmm. So is there a particular reason why why Black Rock haven't been back to this stage? I mean watching them this year and seeing some of the, the scores they've put up certain players like Michael Michael O'Halloran has really stood out but what's it like I think 2002 was their last title and they'd won three in four years and they've probably been not too far away since the odd occasion and lost the final to Immokili, I think, 2016. But is there any particular reason they've been down? Well, like that, that team was a great, great, great team in terms of like you know, a lot of guys who play Cork Senior, you know, the likes of Alan Brown, Fergal Ryan, John Brown, um, and a few more. Probably just kind of all departed in one kind of a go, um, and they kind of just slipped back in for a couple of years. But there was a major kind of a focus on their underage, and I mean, over the last decade, you know, they've really been coming strong. They've been winning county minors, they've been winning on the 21s. It's just a matter of Jack kind of just translating that into kind of senior success has been the issue in the Sunday block for them. Like they got to the final of 2017, a bit unlucky to lose to McKilly and that. Um, last year, they would have been kind of uh, caught by the fact that they had won their first round game. There was a big, I suppose, kind of a layoff and then they got beaten by Newton Chandler and a bit of a surprise result. From what I can gather this year, I think they have been one of the major beneficiaries of the way the system has worked out in that they've had a clear run of it. They would have had four or five guys who have been banned to go to America this summer uh, on J1s, but everything that happened, everyone was around, um, everyone was available to them. I mean, they don't have any, like Michael Hallern's on the fringes of the Cork scene, they have a few other guys like that, but they don't really kind of have any major, major stars that, in the same way Glenn Rovers have with Patrick Morgan that might stand out to people from the outside. But I think that's worked out for them. I think they're a very well balanced side. They look to me quite experienced now. Like I was looking at the quarter final against Douglas and just really well drilled. Uh, everyone kind of knows their role, kind of a couple of good strong defenders. And so you mentioned O'Halloran there. I mean, he was actually held scoreless in Saturday's semi final and they still managed to score 326. They had a couple of guys who came off the bench and did very well. And I think that tradition factor, though, tradition can be maybe both a strength and maybe maybe a slight hindrance in the sense that it does maybe create that bit of pressure on you to, to kind of succeed. But um, you see the guys with kind of well-known names, family names like Nell Cashman was absolutely brilliant for them in the half-back line. His dad, Jim, would have been well-known to a lot of people with his exploits. Uh, Fergal Ryan is the manager. His son, Jamie, was cornerback. So they have that kind of lineage just kind of starting to come through now. Um, and they will be tipped at the start of the year. It was kind of one of the leading sides and they haven't really uh, put a foot wrong. And Saturday probably the most impressive display in the way that they had to dig deep. Probably maybe not their most best hurling performance, but the way they dug it out um, was really, really impressive. Against, look, as you know, you've probably seen the start 15 against what was a pretty star studded outfit. Yeah, and like uh, we probably haven't really talked about how exciting this game was yet, because 326 to 34 points after extra time, clearly massive drama, just a point in it. Um, how good of a game was it? Yeah, it, it was actually probably a bit of a slow burner in that the first half, um, you know, it, was, it was good but it wasn't like of a massively high standard but I think it really picked up as it went on the thing about it was that you used to see we're always at three or four points ahead and you always kind of felt they were going to keep them maybe at arm's length but Blackrock just got the goals at kind of vital times and it really picked up and, like it was just brilliant entertainment from about the second half water break on uh, the way Blackrock got the third goal from Alan Connolly then you see push on again and then Blackrock in injury time first of all Nile Cashman gets a point and then Alan Connolly 
it's a real pressure free from about 60, 70 yards he came out from foot forward to send it the extra time. And again, UCC kind of took over, got the few points, and they went ahead. But the thing was, and we can get into maybe kind of UCC's uh, participation and, and the question marks over that, they didn't actually really have a very strong panel and a very deep panel. And it kind of showed, we could see certain players starting to tire a bit. Uh, Killian Dwyer uh, from Kilnall, he went off injured. He was a big loss in defence. And Blackrock got a couple of guys in who injected just a bit of pace and a bit of bite into their attack, hit five points in a row. Um, and suddenly they were gone two ahead and you could see you know, the one last attack um, Shane Conway blasted in a shot it went just over the bar and Blackrock held down by one and even though there was only 200 fans there and they were actually in the far stand from where I was in the press box even that alone makes such a difference to the kind of excitement levels because you know they're making their voice heard and it just helps kind of create that atmosphere even that small little bit and I think that for me anyway, that, that did enhance the occasion and yeah it was just it was just really, really good entertainment. And mm. I think that was the, the kind of main thing about it. Um, and yeah, very, very good match. And like, br- brilliant for Black Rock to kind of show, I suppose, they were really, really impressed with going the quarterfinal against Douglas and shutting down a lot of Douglas's kind of stars and kind of winning that game. But they kind of had to maybe show different qualities here and kind of dig deep. Um, I know more than kind of previous games we talked about, the only thing about it is it's not really a game where you can kind of savour and kind of relax in it for so long when you have the final coming up next Sunday yeah and for a club like Black Rock you'd, you would hope that if they get playing at their optimum the sum will be more than the parts themselves for UCD who are bringing players in you know Shane Conway's obviously playing with his club and then comes along here albeit he's played in the Fitzgibbon the last few years same with Mark Keogh scored that unbelievable goal at the start of 2020 but then they parachute in Conor Boyle and, and so on and so forth and Boyle had been unbelievable for Napiership this year in the Limerick Championship uh, were they anywhere close to the sum of their parts or more than the sum of their parts and how they played or do they look a bit disjointed because they're probably pulled together at shorter notice no they, they, they didn't look disjointed and um, I mean, it's a different team to the Fitzgibbon team in that they have a good few couple of freshers. And this is look, probably one of the aspects about them. What I would say, they have done a bit more of a focus on Cork this year and in, in Cork players and the way that they beat, um, the way they beat him Achille, the, the champions in the first game. And then they look really good at times against the Pierschig in their quarterfinals. So, I mean, if they scored 34 points, I mean, that kind of says it all about the kind of the attacking punch that they carried. So look, on the one hand, I would say, it's a great platform for guys like the two guys that have stood out would be Shane Barrett and Paul Power. They were both been on the court on the 20 last year. Um, they would have played in the Dr. Harkey Cup final with Christians a few years ago. So they're kind of climbing the different rungs of the ladder. And I think this competition has been great for them. Uh, obviously, the, the club have been doing very well at intermediate level, but in kind of, I suppose, hitting them at kind of senior level. I mean, like Power scored six points in play, and like he looks a really, really good prospect, and he definitely looks like he's taking his game to another level. The issue is. The guys that come in, as you said, Boylan hadn't been involved up until now. Like personally, I, I don't have a problem with Mark Kyo or Andrew Casey of Waterford, but my argument would be, and correct me if I'm wrong, but Kyo, like Kyo's club aren't senior in Tipperary. So this is a chance, I think, for him to play in a senior championship. Um, unfortunately, like, look, Boylan's a brilliant player, um, but having seen him the previous Saturday night in the Gaelic grounds, I think the problem was, and what annoyed people, is the fact that he's then available to play in another senior championship the following week. Paddy Lachlan obviously got well, another massive player for them um, at centre back. So I think maybe the, the, the issue is that maybe there could be just a little bit, maybe of tweaks are kind of made, made to the rule. Um, but you always get this whenever they get this far in the championship. I mean, it was the same kind of when you see we're going well back in the day in Dublin, but there will be calls to, to kind of get them out of there. They're never going to be popular, but I do think that they do uh, serve a purpose in terms of kind of giving chance, players a chance uh, to play at a level. And one of those would be Shane Conway. I mean, the kids club, if they win the Kerry Senior Championship, they're not into the Munster Senior Club, they're into the Munster Intermediate Club. So I think there's an argument in a wider hurling promotional value and giving guys a chance. I don't really see any harm to be honest in someone like him getting a chance to play. And by the way, he was absolutely brilliant to watch. Mm -hmm. Like in the first half, he he actually hit a couple of wides and I'd say he was intercepted for about three crossfield passes. But then in the second half, he just started to take over floating around the place. Blackrock couldn't get a handle on in, in the first half of extra time alone, uh, two players got yellow carded for pretty hard hits on them. So it looked like there was certainly a, maybe a few words said at the end of full time, you know, we need to get a handle on this guy. But he actually got up on both occasions and pointed the freeze. Um, like hit 14 points, you know, and, and was 
just I'm saying this I suppose as a neutral observer and he was absolutely just brilliant to watch I can't understand how maybe BlackRock would have maybe felt the grief maybe if, they, if they'd lost that narrowly mm, but as a died in the wool rebel yourself you know Mr Blood and Bandages Cork born and reared do you not do you think that UCC being in the championship is helpful for Cork hurling in general and the inter-county team well, I, I do on this occasion. I mean, like one of the examples, the last one, last time they were in a semi final, you see, it was an 05. I don't know if you remember that, but it was a team that had a, mo- a lot of Cody's Kilkenny side were playing. Mm. Like Tommy Walsh, Jaffa Fitzpatrick, Tennyson, Rice. There's an argument there, like, I think with that kind of maybe type of a side, like, but definitely some of the younger core players that have played in this. Um, like David Griffin was very good wing back. You know, Mark Coleman is probably a bit more of an established name. The two Blarney guys that I'd mentioned, you know, I think it's a great kind of platform for them to kind of emerge. Um, and then I suppose maybe one of the guys that I know, the goalkeeper, would be club in mind, Dylan Desmond, he's the, the team captain. A great chance for him to play in a, in a court senior championship. Um, so, I, I, yeah, I, I think there's a value to them uh, being there, to be honest. I mean, like, it's the same argument with the divisional concept. I think people maybe outside maybe don't understand it, don't understand it, but I do think there is, it is something to be looked at as regards whether guys who are playing at a senior championship level with their clubs in other counties. I think that is the grey area for me, especially when you see, the, like the impact Boylan had in the first half when he, when he played, like, you know, he was kind of a late inclusion into the team. Um, and he scored three points from play in that first half alone. And uh, like Blackrock really were in trouble. I mean, the UCM for Limerick for years, his, abil- and the Pearson, his ability on the puck outs, and he's just that focal point, and you can just launch everything down on top of him, you know, and you always got to win it, or he's going to kind of do something with it. And that kind of showed. Yeah, they would like actually would have lost the uh, they lost Neil Montgomery, you know, the Waterford hurler. He got injured in a football game the previous week, um, and then the other one that they didn't have available to them, which like imagine if they had was Bill Sheehan, was another who you know, I suppose they were seeing how Dixborough were going throughout the championship, you know, so they were probably two kind of non court guys, um, that, that probably would possibly could have been uh, in the frame for them. Yeah, and you you were talking about Dylan Desmond, there, the goalkeeper, and of course involved with your own club. Air Og over the weekend as well. Can you explain his weekend before we move on to Glen Rovers and Naren's own? Yeah, I, I, ju- I just thought he had a pretty dramatic uh, twenty-four hours. Look, it's it's a lower grade that, that he's playing, like it's a fourth tier in Cork, uh, the intermediate A grade. But so he basically was in goal for UCC on Saturday evening. He's captain. They lose by a point after extra time. He then plays in an intermediate semi-final yesterday. Uh, team are down by three points at the end against Sarsfield second team. And he comes up and he nails two long distance threes to send the game into extra time. Uh, then goes to extra time, finishes level at the end of that. And there's a penalty shootout. And apparently this was the first one in Cork in a championship game. Uh, he used to settle it. He actually took the first penalty himself. He had a really good strike for ball. He missed it. But he then went obviously in goal for the rest of them. And he saved two of them. And club won and into the county final. So I was saying to someone like if, if they had lost that penalty shootout, like, you know, that would have been a quite a 24 hours for him to take like you know losing two county hurling semi-finals in uh in that sort of circumstances so it was a nice kind of a personal outcome for him after the weekend yeah fair play to dylan uh the glen rovers against aaron's own semi-finals so 22 points to 310 glen had had a bye to the stage having done so well in the group stages whereas aaron's own had i suppose you could say stunned sarsfields in their quarter final do do you look at like was this Glen Rovers at their best? I didn't get a sense that that they were. Like Patrick Horgan scored four from play in ten place balls, but uh, what I read on a report uh, was that he was more or less held in in a general sense. Well, uh, I suppose just first of all on the Glen Rovers thing, I know they were quite wary when they saw the comparison that they had made with what had happened to Patrick Spell and the Piercy in Limerick. <clears throat> Similar enough, sort of the championship structure, and that they had got boys to the semi didn't have the advantage. Um, of a quarter and they felt that they got caught uh, then as a result and it was definitely the first half that side of Rossi and the Glen Rovers um, whereas Aaron Zone had got to the quarter final and had had a big win over Sarsfields and kind of got through so you could see that in them but then the, like then, the more the game went on they just got stronger I mean I think they won the second half uh, 15 points to 1-3 which kind of shows that they were definitely getting on top and they were gaining a grip um, on Aaron Zone as regards their kind of star names, Hogan still scored 14 points. Kind of, you know, still scored three points in play. It's, it's kind of weird. Like, you're kind of thinking he's maybe not massively involved, but then you look back and he's still the third for a couple of those himself. He still set up two points. So he had a hand in about 16 out of their 22 points. And in fairness, in the third quarter, when they kind of really needed something after half time, that's when two of his points in play arrived. And he then was nailing all his frees. So that kind of, you know, and obviously, Arizona always have to watch him. And the fact was, they are still. 
I suppose, backbone by so many of their kind of experienced players that won a couple of counties a decade ago. Like, the big guys people would be familiar with, like, Kieran Hero Murphy, who's 37, still playing, still really influential, in fairness. But, I mean, they're quite open about the fact that they haven't had the underage players coming through. So they still need these guys to be involved, to be kind of at that level. And it was kind of this classic game where an underdog got a massive bonus early with two early goals. But then they lost two of their defenders through injury. They lost another one during the week. And they were just going deep onto their bench. And, you know, you kind of felt they were hanging on a bit. Then the third goal arrived. And that was the other thing, I suppose. They, Glen Rover's main thing was they were going to have to watch Robbie O'Flynn, you know, the Cork senior, uh, see what he could do. Um, and he definitely caused him a good bit of bother. But when Robert Downey went on him, that was a great kind of a personal duel. Whereas, like, on the Glen Rover side, you watch Horgan, but then it opened up the space. And that was the noticeable thing. It just a couple of other guys got through and got points. And it kind of always felt the more the game went on that they weren't getting on top. And if it wasn't for that third goal, I suppose uh, that Evans own got, you would have thought that it was going to be kind of um, maybe a bit more comfortable for Glenn in the last quarter. So it was a good contest, but I think the, the, the expected outcome um, was the one that materialised with the favourites advance. Mm, and no way McKilly to worry about this year. Do you think Glen Rovers would be feeling... Are Glen Rovers heavy enough favourites in your mind? No, I wouldn't say heavy enough favourites. Um, I'd say, you know, it, it's like... Like Blackrock are just a really, really good side. I think they really know what they're about. I think they're really well drilled in defence. Uh, I think they're good on the line in terms of the way that they, if over the course of Saturday's game with the likes of Conor Boyle and Shane Conway, they kind of shuffle their defenders around to kind of give themselves uh, different ways of kind of getting on top of those guys. I think they show their metal and kind of digging it out um, at the final whistle uh, to get the extra time. And they have a couple of guys off the bench who can cause a, a good bit of problems for them. And then you'd imagine the experience of 2017. Uh, and I think it's probably good for both sides, particularly back rock when they haven't won it. Maybe the fact that there is no crowd, I mean, like it would have been one of those, like, you know, you probably see a lot of it in the media this week, and a lot of it talked about it. And if there was a two week build up, there would be a lot of hype about this game because it is a traditional uh, Cork City pairing. Um, you know, I suppose the good thing is if uh, Delisal hadn't played Mount Sinai in a long time, Waterford, like, you know, or a couple of the Dublin sides, like, or the, the two Kilkenny sides, there is just something different, isn't there, about that kind of, you know, urban kind of rivals playing each other so maybe it's as well for them that there won't be a massive crowd I mean I think there's a chance you know you look at reports in the news there might be any fans at all at their name you know if the restrictions um, are increasing Cork uh, City this week um, so it'll be kind of a different type of an occasion from that point of view Oregon is the kind of game changer you know they probably don't have one guy standout guy of that level and the other thing down overs do have their half back line is brilliant like down is the guy that probably a lot of people would you know would be familiar with but Brian Boylan has been a really really strong slow parlor for a long long time centre back Dave Newman and the side and they are they do have the experience as well I mean this is their fourth uh, yeah it's fourth final I think in six years um, and I, or sorry fifth final in the, in seven years So and after this point the last year uh, so really good final it's, it's a good good one to look forward to um, you just hope now like it's live TV coverage you hope that it actually turns into a good game mm. and uh, it doesn't fall back because they, this, I suppose you've seen the contrast happening over the, the hurling finals that have been televised over the last couple of weeks tip absolutely brilliant gripping stuff last week then yesterday was just you know Paddy Hale just uh, at their absolute brilliance you know and it was kind of uh, one-sided stuff mm. and then a final question do you think Kieran Kingston has seen any players uh, in the past couple of weeks that might catch his eye ahead of the winter anyone that we wouldn't necessarily have heard of or someone who was on the fringes like Robbie O'Flynn has been in and out of the team can he now step up he scored one five one three from play and I know he said Robert Downey kind of tied him up afterwards but in a wider sense have you seen a few lads step up yeah I would I think it's gonna be very interesting to see what he's gonna do um, you know I've seen the court management but a lot of the games in terms of kind of I suppose the different questions you're asking there in terms of players that could step up I think Niall Cashman is a guy he's played underage he played kind of senior water for Crystal a couple of years ago I'd be interested to see if he got a look in I think he's been really good in defence for Black Rock um, and then maybe not this year he might still be a bit young but like Padre Power in uh, the UCC attack like uh, it was on Blarney I, Mark Coleman's club I think he's definitely a guy with really really good potential um, and looks really really exciting and then the second part of that question I suppose the guys to try and nail down spots like Robbie O'Finn is definitely a really really good championship and again you wonder now will this be I suppose it'll, it'll uh, unfold over the next couple of weeks and we'll see like but will he be an example of a guy that benefits from the way that this championship has fallen from him that he can kind of attack the, the inter-county scene now um, Downey's form is really really good and as we know defence and the central positions in particular 
have been a problem for Cork over the last couple of years. So, you know, he's been kind of in and out of the team a little bit, played in the wing, but I wonder will he get a chance to maybe nail down one of the, the central defensive positions. Uh, so I definitely think there's been a lot for, or more than I presume any other manager around the country, uh, a lot for him to think about. But it's, it's going to be really interesting to see when the team sheets come out, isn't it, for the main counties, who has changed their thinking from maybe the spring at the start of the year, who, when you look back on it, was it actually the club? was the stage and I definitely think there's kind of four or five options that have kind of emerged for Cork that uh, maybe could influence his thinking. Gustav Fenton, cheers.